Hello guys, I'm on a super tough setup, but uh, I won the match against Vidit. If you don't know, I played a match last night against Vidit Gujarathi, who was an extremely strong player. He was in the top 10 earlier this year. He played in the candidates, and he also beat Hikaru in two classical games with the candidates. So I beat the player who prevented Hikaru from fighting for the World Championship. So, I'm really, really happy about this match. This is only the beginning. And next up, I should play Anish. We had a bunch of matches planned. So I wanted to go into some of the games. There was live commentary on Chessbase India. So I wanted to do a recap, go through some of the games, talk about the match. Uh, there were basically, it was like a tennis format with three sets. I won the first set, lost the second set, and then clutched up in the third set. So forgive the scuff setup, forget the bad microphone, but let's, let's analyze some of these games. And again, if you want to learn and you want to improve your chess, go to gmhaws.com. And you get for six dollars a month, you get a lot of really, really great stuff. Hi right, guys, so we're going to be starting to look at some of these games again. I'm going to super, super scuff setup. So uh, let's look at the match. We started with the Italian. We played a lot of the Italian, um, and here we basically just went down the sea of theory. Um, we actually Vedit had a game against Abdusitarov. Um, in a classical game that basically went the like the exact same way, um, and I, I guess e takes f six was a big mistake here. I should have played b four, but yeah, this opening, you know, he was getting two positions to the opening. I was a little bit worse. Uh, then I managed to consolidate, and um, eventually he sort of was, you know, he lost control. So this was a nice first win. Um, I was very very happy with this. Then I think another game I was doing quite well. Um, I, in the beginning, I felt really good. Like, in this game, everything was good. I was sort of outplaying him. I had a good position. I think at some point, I must have been winning. Uh, yeah, you can see I was just outplaying him. Wow, I should play knight d8, knight c6. Yeah, I didn't see this plan. Wow. Yeah, so the, it was unclear. I had a great position. I'm just supposed to go queen f5, and he goes here, and then queen g6, I guess. Is, but it's it's super, super tough stuff. Anyways, I sort of blundered, and then, wow, I'm winning again here. So many blunders, yeah, so many blunders, yeah. Well, yeah, just rookie eight. Anyways, with time pressure, I was sort of choking, then I blundered, then I just lost control, and then I literally blundered an entire rook. Oh my, I literally had a rook c2. Yeah, so, you, as you can see, and I literally blundered an entire rook. Um, I think the pressure got to me, I wasn't really warmed up. And I lost this game. Then again, the openings the openings were going my way. Like here I got a great opening position. Um getting a call, you can cut this out. Second. Okay, yeah, so I got like a great opening position. I'm not sure how exactly I was supposed to punish this. Yeah, I had a feeling that this was correct, but I wasn't really sure. But again, I felt like really good. I was sort of doing well. Um, I guess here I have to find queen c3. Well, yeah, it's it's diff difficult stuff, difficult stuff. Um, but I was out playing him. It was a draw. And this was another game where I was sort of struggling in the opening. He was He, he got good positions, but... Here I was also winning, I think, at some point. Yeah, he 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 blundered this. Um I was doing well, everything was good. I had I was at, you know sort of sort of under control. But again, he defended really well. It was it was impressive. Yeah, Rick of Fate, yeah. Bad, very bad, very bad. And then here I sort of took control. Again, we had we were keep we kept playing the Italian. Um I yeah, this was this was an insane moment. And anyways, I don't want to go through every game. Anyway, so I, I won this, then then he lost, and then this was this was we can go. This was the clutch game. So I I was sort of going for the Italian, and I was doing the same thing over and over again. So I decided to switch. And this line, I actually had a classical game, like basically up until here. Um, this is more precise, um, but here I literally knew like all of the plans. So. As soon as I got this, and then bishop h3, it's crazy that like a6, g5, and like black is supposed to be better, but he made rook, he played rook e8, and after queen a3, I traded the queens, and I've just got 
Took a great position. He blunders the pawn. And this was super, super clean. I was really happy with this game. So this was a really nice technical game. I was sort of, you know, getting my groove warming up. Um, but this was a really, you know, great start. Match, I sort of started poorly. I started with two losses, um, which were very, very bad um, and unnecessary. Then I came back with a nice win. We had this... Uh, I was really playing quite ambitiously in the Carol Khan. And then we got this end game where I just started outplaying him. Um, at some point it was bad, but in the end games, and the tactic, like here he blundered before. Um, so in the technical positions, I was really, really outplaying him, and I, I had like the end games were really good. And then this was sort of the critical moment where um, I had this great game. I was really just in time pressure. Like in this game, I, everything was going well. I had a good position. Like, how do I win? Knight c2, yeah. You know what's crazy is I actually saw knight c2, but I hesitated. I don't know why I hesitated. It's actually so crazy that I literally saw knight c2. And yeah, so I just I was just hesitating. It was not good. And here I sort of, this was the critical moment. Because although everything was fine, at this point, I'm literally winning. I just play f2. And I had 8 seconds, and I literally play f2, and then the match would be even. And after I missed this and I lost, I just sort of went on tilt. Till I managed to win, you know, this game, which was actually really, really nice. I mean, he was playing quite solidly, and there was not much I could do. But I was slowly, slowly taking some risk. Eventually, he got completely out of control. And uh, we, I also had no time. Things were bad, and then I tricked him, and... Anyways, I was really outplaying him in, in every end game. This was really the key, the key difference. Then I lost this game and like literally out of the opening, which was just ridiculous. And then the match was just over. So this was just some tilt and some, you know, like this, this losing like that is so necessary. But then around three, sort of sped up. I started with this very nice win. Um, and here we go. Again, I was going for the C4 structures. Um, I was testing him in different places. We got a sort of slow position. We're moving around. Again, it's difficult with the time. I was moving around, moving around, moving around. And he was actually just completely outplaying me. Um, but then, again, in time pressure, he, was, he sort of collapsed. Like, at this point, I sort of... I got all these pieces. I have a bishop, but his king's weak. I'm attacking. But, again, eventually, in time pressure, I outplayed him, and I won his queen. Then he fought back with a win. But I was actually just complete, like... I think... Yeah, this this I just I got cruised, and then he beat me again. Um, but I had a, he. It's funny that he played this h6 a6 stuff when this is not. This is actually what I play against my opening, and uh, h4 is stupid. Anyways, uh, he actually played. I think I had a blitz game against Nerditsky in this line, um, and I lost this game. He played very well. It was a nice technical game. Um, however, I bounced back very importantly with black. Like I. I I, I sort of made the mistake of just going for the Berlin every game. I should have tried to mix things up. Like this game, things got dynamic, and things were dynamic and imbalanced. And like for example, this position it was interesting. And two bishops, slowly but surely, slowly but surely, we traded the queens. Again, I've got the bishops, and I got the you know. So I have to consolidate. But here again, I should just go h five. Like I, again, you see, when you have twenty seconds, it's hard to sort of keep control. But my rook in h five. Was a bit stupid, but I'm slowly but surely, slowly but surely protecting my pieces. My bishop comes to the diagonal. I come to f5, and then I, I trick him with d4. Now I get this, and then my rook comes to d3. My bishops are activated, and here he he flags. So this was a nice, like when in technical positions, I was really really outplaying him. Um, and here I sort of I went for again something very simple. Again, not the best opening. It's like a king's Indian down some tempos. And uh, he was definitely playing very well. I'm waiting patiently. I kept it under control. Eventually, we liquidate into an endgame. And when you look at this position, you think, like, okay, it's just going to be a draw. But no, 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 no. Uh, my king's coming, right? Because the king's coming to g5. He tries to blockade. This was really clutch because the match is 2 2. It looks like a dead draw. But with, with a little time, I eventually get my, 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 my king to a 4. Then my king gets to g5. Then I'm winning this pawn. And then the game is just over. I put my bishop on a four, the bishop is stuck, I take g6, I run the run the ball, and it's just game over. So this was the turning point when I have like three, two, when I have this amazing, this was such such a clutch win. And then I kept the momentum. I have black. And uh I, I he would be over here for the same thing. I play sort of solid. He is he does completely outplay me. 
However, I, I, I sort of t I, sh I shift the momentum, I get an attack. He makes a big mistake with g3, I get rook to f3, now I'm just completely in control, I'm attacking. And then he blunders with bishop e3. And here, okay, okay, engine says I have some insane win, like if takes, I play takes, takes here. I was looking at these sacrifices, but I thought, let me just take the pawn. Let me just trade the queens, and I'll just take all the pawns, and eventually I take the pawn, I trade the pieces. So now I'm at 4-2, I've won three games in a row, I'm, I'm, I'm in control, and I have white again. He goes for the knight or... He tries to play some interesting stuff. Okay, then I'm trying to play solid. He's trying to attack me. I'm developing my pieces. Eventually, I break with d4. And this was really my, I really, I don't care what the engine says. So, engine says I should play d5. But I really love this move b3. Takes rook b1, c4, and takes, takes d5. And I don't really care what the engine says. Because it felt nice in the moment. Uh, apparently, like, you're supposed to go like this, knight h5. And if rook takes b3, I guess you have knight g3, which is strong. And I, now I have to go king g2, and you're holding it. Anyways. But practically, I took the risk, and then I was very happy with g3. Because, again, he doesn't... I'm up 4-2, right? So he's, I'm psychologically, he wants to keep the game going. But here, I'm... like, Let's say this position, I'm down a pawn, but he's got a terrible structure. I've got past c pawn. I've got a lot of activity. So here he just... Again, he goes on tilt. He's on objective. Take the c pawn. Connect my pieces. I maneuver my knight to d3 to play c5, c6. Knight is stuck in h5. And eventually I attack the queen. He doesn't see it. And then this was the final game where I did lose. No, no, I lost this game. I was struggling in the opening, really struggling in the opening. Um, it was really bad what I was doing. It was just terrible. At one point, uh, I was winning. He played, rook, he played rook g4. I just played queen h5, which is game over. Uh, so I should have been more alert. I have a minute and 30 seconds. So it was just stupid. Um, however, in the final game, I had white. I was up 5-3, so I need just two draws. I played a solid opening, hoping you would overpush. It's like a well-known, very solid line. And it's quite symmetrical, but again, I have a slight edge. Uh, you know, I'm just sort of waiting, waiting. Bishop is strong in e5, waiting, waiting. But I didn't want to force a draw. I want to keep the game going. My point was, I just want to keep the game going, wait until he gets into time pressure, and then I will, I'll go for it. So eventually, he, he overpushes. He gives away the bishop pair. And then now he starts pushing, but now I've got the, the two bishops lining up to the king. I play h4, kicking it. I go here, I go bishop here. Yeah, and then now I go bishop c2. The point of bishop c2 is I'm just waiting. If a4, obviously, first of all, I can take and take on e6. And it's a waiting move. When you're playing blitz, uh, you know, maybe I can go queen t3, queen a6. When you're playing blitz, waiting moves are difficult. But bishop, now this was my, no, super, super strong move. Bishop d6. And now you can't take because of here. So everything just sort of collapses, he goes back here, and I, you know, rook comes t7. So this was a really, really nice match. Um, I'll make the camera bigger just for the final part where I'm talking. This is a really nice match. I'm really happy um, about it. Vidit's a very strong player. He was in the candidates. He beat Hikaru twice, so he beat Hikaru twice in classical. I beat him, so I'm much better than Hikaru. And um, obviously it was a great match. Thank you to Universal Chester for organizing it. Of course, I'm very happy to win $30,000. Um, and I'm also... Happy to play on home soil. So thank you for watching this recap. Make sure to go to gmhaunts.com for all the future grandmasters. Only $6 a month to get access to behind-the-scenes exclusive videos on chess improvement. And the full opening repertoire is coming. So if you want to get access to the opening repertoire, there's going to be different opening repertoires for every, like for different rating ranges, all for only 6 bucks a month. So instead of spending $100 in courses, go to gmhaunts.com to support me against the fight against the chess monopoly and chess mafia. And to all future Grandmasters, peace out, keep working hard, and I will see you soon.